My name is Chris. Very nice to meet you. Glad you could come out today. Um, I understand uh, you're pretty close, if not exactly the same age I am, and you're in your mid-30s. And I know that I feel like garbage every day I wake up because I don't take care of myself. Uh, I can't imagine what your body goes through as a fighter, so I'm wondering um, the, the lifespan of a fighter, whether you get into a younger, uh, you know, in your late teens, early 20s, or a little bit older, what would be an average lifespan for a, for a fighter? Just in the ring, I don't mean literally lifespan, but... You know, it's, a, it's an interesting question, and um, I've had this question with some of my coaches and stuff, and uh, honestly, I believe a uh, good lifespan for a fighter, uh, being able to compete at that level is, is 10 to 15 years, and that's whether you get in it at 20, or you get in it at 30. That's why you see Randy Couture still being able to compete today. Randy, I don't think he got into it until I want to say he was around 33. Um, some of these other guys, you look at um, uh, Noguera. You know, Noguera is younger than me, and you know, personally, I hope I think he looks a little bit older than me. <laughs> so, some of you guys might beg to differ. You know, if I take my hat off, I definitely look a little bit older. You know, it's Father Time playing with me, so. Uh, my body feels great. It's, it's um, you know, I feel like I at least have, you know, a, a good couple more years and I definitely could have more time than that, but there's other things that I want to do in my life and, and my son, you know, he's, he's playing Little League football and, and there's other dreams that I have and then some of those dreams are to be able to, to coach him and watch him grow as an athlete and, and be with my daughter and family and, and somewhat give back to the sports that have given to me, so. Um, as far as I'm concerned with fighting and, and me is I probably have maybe two Possibly three years left and then, and then that's it and and I'll move on and, and I'll be happy Do you know when your next fight is and who it is up against? I don't know when my next fight was supposed to be January 1st and uh, you know people always ask me Is there is there people that you dislike or you don't like out there and it was supposed to be against Roy Nelson And I really don't like the guy uh, he, he, he talks a lot of crap. He's constantly talking. Um, I think he disrespects people a little bit. And, and honestly, when I fought Brock, people asked me if I had a problem with Brock, and, and I don't. You know, and, and Brock and I have a lot of the same character. We both like hunting. We both like fishing. We like the outdoors. I think Brock has just been overexposed to people through his wrestling days and stuff like that, and it's kind of wore him out. And, and he's kind of got a sour attitude about things. But if you get to see the guy uh, backstage or, or anything, uh, you know, he, he, he's a decent guy and his camp and his coaches are great guys. How much weight do you cut? How much weight do I cut? That might have been one of my problems against Brock. Um, I came in Tuesday when they flew us into Vegas. I was uh, 282. I had to be down to 265 by Friday. So. I cut 17 pounds from Tuesday to Friday for that fight. Um, these next fights, I'm hoping with the diet that uh, you know Richard and I can come up with and, and something that's going to work for me. I would rather, I think my body personally, it's not so much about weight. I can keep my strength and, and fight strong, I think, around 250 or 255 pounds. I'd just like to make a quick mention out to Rich and Pauline of Reflex uh, Edmonton here. They've worked very hard to bring these events together and I know that a lot of people don't have a lot of expertise on supplements and nutrition. Um, they are available in the store today to go over any questions that you might have specifically in regards to diet and nutrition. Um, they're able to put these events together through your support so make sure you stop by before we all leave here and uh, show your support again and uh, answer any questions that you might have. All right, give us your night's predictions on the GPS or GSP and Crosscheck fight. Uh, you know, honestly, and I've, I've had this conversation, GSP, he's, uh, you know, he, he's what the UFC is. Um, he is the example of our sport, and I'm not just saying this because I'm in Canada. He's part of our team, and, and I see him around people and uh, our guys, and, and uh, he can light up a room when he walks into it. and. And honestly, as far as um, how he trains um, and, and the, the disciplines and, and his style, and uh, I just don't think there's anybody in that weight division that's, a, that's a, a close second to him. But what we have to realize is this is MMA, and uh, you know, with four ounce gloves, the littlest mistake can make the difference in this game. You know, that's not saying uh, 
you know, 99 out of 100 times GSP beats this guy, there's always that chance, unfortunately, in MMA that, uh, you know, which I think kind of makes it exciting as well that the other guy has a chance. But uh, I think uh, GSP will, will showcase his talents tonight and make Koscheck look bad. How do you feel about guys that refuse to fight each other because they're friends? And how often does it happen? And what do you think their feelings are if they're in a forced situation? Uh, you know, guys fight, I think, that are friends. I think the problem comes when they're teammates. And um, I guess, you know, that's, uh, this, is, this is a business. Um, so that's like saying, would Brendan Schaub and, and, and me ever fight? And uh, he's like a little brother to me. Um, you know, I don't think so. Uh, he's like a little brother to me, and, and uh, I would never want to put uh, that dynamic between us. Um, whether or not we would have a say in that is something else. That's something that, that Dana White and, and Joe Silva always say, you know, we'll make, we'll make whoever fight that we want. And uh, for the most part, they've stayed away from it. Uh, I don't know if it's because they don't want to deal with the controversy with it or, or, or not, but um, um, as far as fighting a, a close teammate, yeah, I, I don't think I could do it. Tell us about the real checks. I think everybody out there wants to know, how much money do these guys make? How much, how much money do these guys make? Uh, this is an interesting thing I was talking to Richard this morning about. Um, Honestly, I almost had to give fighting up. Uh, when I first started out, uh, you know, these fights, they were paying me a thousand at a time. And uh, a lot of you guys think this is, you know, oh, that might be okay money, but my boxing coach, Trevor Whitman, charged out at $80 an hour for a training <laughs> session. That's one training session. My jiu-jitsu coach, Christian Allen, he was the same price. And uh, thank God Christian was good at, uh, uh, jiu-jitsu and, and uh, Thai boxing because uh, you know I could double up a little bit and save some money and then uh, thankfully wrestling I'm an assistant coach at uh, Division One College there in Colorado so I think the first year that I really um, put my heart and soul into trying to become a fighter I lost twenty one thousand dollars okay well how about the checks now <laughs> how about the checks now yeah, she's not interested when I first started <laughs> I gotta tell you about the hardships first. <laughs> um, let's just say the checks now, they have definitely made a difference in my life. And, and, and there are, um, I know everybody can go on and, and look what the, what the commit, the athletic commission pays us. And, uh, but I believe uh, Dana White and the Fertitta brothers, if you go out there and perform for them, they do give locker room bonuses that you guys don't hear about and they are life-changing. Um, would you ever want to be a coach on The Ultimate Fighter? Would I, would I ever want to be a coach? Uh, I don't know if my monotone style would be very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Might be good for a good like 10 o'clock uh, show to put you to sleep. <laughs> Late night reading with James yeah. Harlan. <laughs> Late night reading, yeah. Um, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. <laughs> what size of gloves do you wear? What is it, 5XL? Is it 5X? Uh, yeah, here's a, here's a, you know, you guys get all these rumors out there on the internet. Um, you know, I don't think they make a 5XL, they make a 4XL. And uh, the problem with them was that they had a skirt in them that you had to fit your hand through. And, and that was my, uh, always, uh, my biggest problem was getting through that. So it was a, it was a 4X. And unfortunately, those have a lot more padding in them than the 2X gloves did. Well, now the UFC finally, in, within this last year, they came out with a new design. And I don't know if you guys know this, but it was Stitch Duran that came up with it. He's one of the corner, or one of the guys that, you know, treats us for cuts, and you always see him for all the fights, and he's got his leather vest on, great guy. But he came up with a glove that's without, the, without the, um, that skirt in it, and uh, it actually wraps twice, and, and now I wear a, just a double X glove, and it's got a lot less padding, and I like that. No, I'm six foot five. I'm a pretty big guy. This is my fist. Now put your fist up yeah. beside me. You want to get punched with that thing? Like, really? That's ridiculous. These, um, these are called man hands. <laughs> hey, come on maybe, now. <laughs> maybe, maybe Neanderthal hands. Those are I don't know. fists. Maybe, um, maybe I just didn't quite evolve all the way.